after being beaten in extra innings yesterday, the Pirates once again play the Rays at Tropicana Field and hope to this time walk away with the win, as they have been a very competitive team these past few weeks, especially the past week, as Chavis strikes out, and at the mound today, Corey Kluber, the former Cleveland Indian and the then former Cleveland Indian pitcher who is now on the Tampa Bay Rays. This one is hit hard, and that one is going to bounce to Madrid. Bly Madrid, excuse me, but that's not going to prevent the single, and he's going to get on base. JT Brubaker is at the mound today after a stellar performance against the Cubs in his last outing. As you recognize, Key Brian Hayes is still not in the game after that slide with Wilson Contreras. And you got to wonder, right, is this a long-term thing, short-term thing, or is it, was he just kind of banged up from that? I don't know. We're going to have to see. And then how does he play when he comes back? As you see, Hoy Park definitely wasn't able to get that ball to him by the time he even had a chance to throw it. And you see there, see, he's just going to go back to second as we are going to go. And he is, this one's hit, and, oh, this one's going to bounce. And that is most likely going to drive in a run, and it will. And the Rays take the early 1-0 to lead here in Florida. Excuse me, 2-0. to They drove in two runs. As you see here again, this one's hit, and it just bounces to Reynolds. Nothing he can really do about it. Didn't have enough time to get to the ball, and it drives in two. And the Rays take the early 2-0 lead. Just like they did yesterday, honestly. They were up 3-0. The Pirates were able to tie it, and then they lost an extra innings, despite the fact that they had a man on third and first with no out in the top of the 10th. As here's Bly Madris. Batting average of 294. Stellar right fielder. He has a ton of promise. He's already playing well right now, as this one is a strike, and he struck him out. So Corey Kluber, a man who hasn't pitched against the Pirates since 2018 so far, is doing pretty well. As here's Jack Sawinski strikes out. And that is going to end the inning for Corey Kluber. As we go to the bottom of the second, the Rays are up to bat once again with Brew Baker pitching as this one is hit. And this one's going to go to shortstop. And it's going to go to Chavis. And he is safe. So they're claiming so it seems as if they claimed that he is safe and it looks like he was but the pirates probably going to end up challenging that just to get a little look at it as you say as you see here Chavis and it looks like I don't know we'll see and they are going to let's see what the umpire says they're going to call it an out. That's what I figured they would do. So when the Pirates get the out, and it's going to take us to the top of the third inning. Castillo up, up to bat. As this one's hit hard by Diego Castillo, and it looks like this one's going to be gone. And it is. Diego Castillo gives the Pirates one run, a singular run, to cut the deficit in half. Pirates still trail 2-1. to one. Castillo's going around the bases. He's hit some... He's hit more home runs than he usually has within the past, like, two weeks compared to the rest of the season. So he's having an above-average performance, I'd say, in terms of his hitting production these past two weeks. And good for him, good for the team. And Castillo, that one, goes inside into the stadium between section 141 and 143. And here's Brian Reynolds. And ever since that series against the Giants, he has been back as this one's hit. And that's going to be a single for Brian Reynolds. And it looks like that one's going to try to drive in Michael Perez. And it will. So the Pirates have tied this game up 2-2. Two to two. And this looks like a pretty similar game to what it was yesterday. As Perez, I don't know if there's something wrong with his leg there, but he seemed to be stumbling. So you're going to see again here, it gets to the center fielder. He throws the ball. And that one just goes to the pitcher. He was there to prevent any extra um, any extra stolen bases that Reynolds could have had if he wasn't there to catch that ball. And it may, But it does make Perez score easily. So the Pirates have tied this game up 2-2. Two two. Here is O'Neal Cruz, and this one's hit. And is it going to drop? No, it's... Oh, yes, it is. And it bounces pretty high. He's got to wait to get it. Cruz... Goes to second, and that is going to be a double for O'Neal Cruz. Man, just this kid has so much promise. 
as you see him on second base right now. And again, you're going to see it hit fairly high, and it drops just before the center fielder can get it. But it was hit so hard and so high that it just seems as though like it bounced. And it, it bounced as though it was a bouncy ball and not a baseball. I mean, look at that. But regardless, O'Neal Cruz is safe at second base, and he gets the double. Rays fans definitely, if they didn't know who this guy was before, they've met him right now with some of the throws and just pure hard hitting capability that this guy has they've seen it here at tropicana field as this one's hit and that is going to most likely it's going to go for extra bases definitely he's going to go to third no he's going to stay at second and he is safe so now if a man on second base rays are looking to reclaim their lead this one's hit, and that's going to be a single, and it's most likely going to drive him in, and it most likely will. It's going to, and the Rays have reclaimed the lead 3-2, to two, and he's going to be safe at second base. Aaron Zada is going to make it a double, and the Rays take the 3-2 to two lead. They drive in Lowy. I'm going to see it here again, right between the gap. Very routine play for the, the, the man on second as he goes home, and the Rays have took the 3-2 to two lead. And this is, mind you, the most probably the most dangerous hitter that the Rays have, Aaron Zada. He, and here is Choi, and he is out. So after the strike, the catcher throws it, and he is out, and you're going to look at that. Oh, no, 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 the catcher, no, JT Brubaker did, and he caught him off. He caught him off guard and gets the out. So that's something that you see in baseball, but you rarely see anymore, but you saw it right here. Brubaker to Cruz, and that's going to end end the inning as we go to the top of the six. Jack Sawinski, this one's hit high, and this one is absolutely crushed. I would have loved to see how that one would have gone and how far that one would have gone in Wrigley Field, or heck, even Coors Field, just because of the uh, altitude. As this one is a three-run homer for Jack Sawinski, the National League leader for home runs amongst rookies that's a three-run homer and the pirates take the five to three lead and that is exactly what the doctor ordered here in the top of the sixth inning jack Sawinski getting it going and you better believe that if you could if you need one man to count on to get you a home run it's going to be jack Sawinski, and he is able to get it the stellar outfielder sometimes you'll play left field sometimes you'll play right he could even play center and regardless you're going to see Sawinski here again this one's going to be foul Oh, he caught it. Jack Sawinski makes the catch over a man. He is okay. And so is everyone else in the area. As Jack Sawinski makes a miraculous catch. Have yourself an inning, Jack Sawinski. What a spectacular play. He knew he had that chance. He was going to have to go into the crowd. He goes there. He catches the ball. He apologizes. You see everyone there is just freaking out. They're like, oh my goodness, what did Jack Sawinski just do? And what? Did, how did he do this around my family? We're Rays fans, for goodness sake. As this one's hit hard off of Chase DeYoung, and that one is gone. So it's now a 5-4 to four lead for the Pirates. Their lead has been cut in half. But, so only one run, and the Rays, they were still in this game, but now they're inching closer back to at least tying it. And who knows, maybe we'll get another extra innings game, but hopefully the Pirates are just able to close this one out in time. As the Pirates weren't able to do anything to the top of the ninth, we're going to the bottom of the ninth. He got the first two outs and now walked two. As Bednar hits his glove and it was a... It's not an easy play to make, but it's a play in that situation that you have to make. You got two outs, then you walked two people, and now you've done that. Bases loaded, two outs. And David Bednar... The person who, he's been blowing some saves lately. Hopefully he doesn't do it again and can get himself out of this situation that we never should have been in considering we have two outs and nobody on. Bednar throws the pitch. And this one's hit. And you better believe it, the Tampa Bay Rays have once again walked it off this time without extra innings being required. And the Tampa Bay Rays for two games in a row have capitalized on some of the Pirates' self-inflicted errors as well as their own stellar play. And they have managed to walk it off and win two in a row against the Pirates. Two games that the Pirates should have won, especially this game. You had two outs, nobody on. You walked two people. You had a ball hit your glove. And granted, it's not the easiest play in the world, but you had a ball hit your glove and then you know what nope i'm not gonna 
catch i'm not going to field that correctly and then he's safe and then you give up one hit so this was a self-inflicted loss and you win this game 95 percent of the time if you're in the pirate situation the other four percent i'd say is a solo home run to tie it and the other one percent is what the pirates just did and they're a very competitive baseball team and in the future the games like this will be won by the pirates but you still like I'm that's why I'm still scared. I'm still scared that whenever this team becomes really good in two to three years, which I think is going to happen, I don't want to I don't want to hold ourselves back with the DNA in our blood that is losing. The Pirates found a way to lose this game, and that is never a good thing. I get it. There's 162 games in an MLB season, but the way the Pirates lost this game should never happen. It shouldn't happen, but they did. They found a way to lose, and that's something that they're going to have to shake out of their DNA whenever they become a playoff contender in, I'd say, probably two to three years. I want to see a good second half of the season. I think we still will, but you have like games like these... They hurt. They sting. These are games that you should win. These are games that make up for that nine-game losing streak that makes us look worse than we actually are. We're better than what our record shows. I promise you that. But the Pittsburgh Pirates found a way to lose this game. And yes, we're not going to the World Series this year. But it's, it's still unbelievable how this team finds ways to lose games like these. And you know what? So are the days of our Pirates.